What up, SFG friends and family and uh, people that I probably haven't met yet, but hopefully I know you from the Facebook page. Um, it's Caleb, Southern Fried Geekery Podcast. Um, hope you all have had a good week. Uh, you're watching this probably going to be after midnight before I get it uploaded, uh, which means you're watching this on the 4th of July. So, you know, happy Freedom Day. Um, be careful. Don't shoot off fireworks. They scare dogs. Um, all that fun stuff. Uh it's, I'm doing this late because uh, I went and saw a little movie that came out tonight. Uh, went and saw the new Spider-Man Far From Home film. Uh, it was good. Um, I'm sure we're going to talk about it on the podcast, uh, so I'm going to save my thoughts about it until then. Um, I'd give it a B-. I, I wasn't in love with it, but it was a solid movie. Um, but pay attention to the podcast, uh, and we'll, we'll post our thoughts uh, on a future episode, which you should be listening to, um, and you can listen to it by signing up for it on whatever podcast aggregate uh, you use, be it iTunes, Libsyn, um, maybe you use Google Play, maybe maybe you use Stitcher like I do, maybe you use Podbean, we're on all of those. Um, I think we're on Pandora, we're on iHeart, we're on lots of stuff. Uh, so you can find us lots of places, so no excuse for not listening to the podcast. <laughs> so... Um, you can also come hang out with us, as always, on our Facebook page. Uh, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, at SFG Podcast, on both of those. Uh, or shoot us an email, southernfriedgeekery at gmail.com. Uh, what am I doing? I am, this is this is an SFG side dish, so this is an addendum, a uh, little extra to the podcast, where every new comic book day, I post my pull list picks. I post what I pulled off the shelf. So let's just dive right into that without wasting any more time. Had a little cleanup to do because my LCS, uh, they got shorted last week, and so I did not get a copy of Avengers number 20. Uh, it is the War of the Realm tie-ins. Jason Aaron, Ed McGinnis, uh, my favorite inker on Earth, Mark Morales, doing the inks. So I got a little catch-up to do on that. And after I get done with that, I'm going to read another number 20 that I'm super excited about. Love every issue of this so far. The Immortal Hulk. Uh, Al Ewing, Joe Bennett, uh, Rui Jose, Paul Mounts. Um, just a whole lot of kick-ass in that book, man. If you're a Hulk fan and you're not reading that, if you're a Marvel fan and you're not reading that, what are you doing? Uh, let's see. Next on the list. Ooh, Frank Martin doing the colors on this. I'm not sure if he's done the first two or not, but it is The Savage Avengers, written by Jerry Duggan, art by Mike Diodato. Um, they are in the Savage Land. It is the Vicious Avengers, plus Conan. I'm a Conan fan. I'm not going to not read it. I'm a Conan fan. It's Conan. Conan in the Savage Land. With with Wolverine, which... Yeah. Marvel, take Wolverine away from Charles Soule. Please. Free, please. We'd love you. We'd love you for it. Um, we don't want him. It's bad. Uh, but this is good. This is Jerry Duggan writing him, so I'm, I'm satisfied with it. Uh, I don't know if this is the last issue of this book, but I wouldn't be surprised. I haven't been paying much attention to it since the announcement that it was going to get rebooted again. But um, this is Uncanny Avengers number 21. Written by Matthew Rosenberg, art by Salvador La Roca, who's amazing. Guru effects on the cover, on the colors, and Joe Caramanga. Doing the letters. Um, so I'm, I'm very lacklusterly reading that. It, it feels very lackluster since they announced the Kurt, the, uh, the Hickman stuff, uh, which is fine, uh, but I'm still going to check it out. From the Amazing Mind of Mr. Ed Brisson, a series that I, I just, I really don't know if I'm going to continue following through with it. Uh, it's Ed Brisson, Mike Henderson, and Nolan Woodard. It's Dead Man Logan, number nine. I mean, it hasn't been bad. Uh, it's, they, they've now branched away from what Brisson did with with Old Man Logan. He's back in his own universe, and I kind of feel like it should have ended uh, at 6, but they're, they're going 12 with it, which is fine. They've got a story they want to tell. I may stick on with it. I may not. It's getting it's getting time to cull the pull list again, so it may not make the cut, even though it's going to like hurt the inside collector in me who thinks that I have to be a completist about everything. I really don't. If I'm not enjoying it, it's, it's taking up time. I, I, maybe I need to Marie Kondo my, my pull list. I don't know. I, so it may, I, you know, maybe this issue blows my socks off. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. The last, uh, like I said, past issue six, not doing it for me. Um, 
a book I'm really excited about. It's a reprint of some older stuff. I say it's a reprint. I don't know if this ever actually was printed, but it's Captain America and the Invaders. They're in the Bermuda Triangle. Uh, it's written by the amazing, the legendary, uh, I don't have enough words I can say about this man. Troy Thomas, drawn by Jerry Ordway, uh, J. David Ramos on the colors. Thomas Ordway back together. I could not pick up this book. Roy Thomas is probably my top three people to have ever written for Marvel, which is big doings, right? I mean, he's fucking Roy Thomas. So I, I had to check this out. Again, I don't know when this was written. It could be could be old or hell. It could be new. Maybe they got those two together and said, print out something new. Um, but Marvel's been doing this lately, getting these like older uh, legendary creators to, to do these little one-shot books, and I don't know if they just found a box of stuff sitting around or what. Uh, we had some Claremont. Um, we've had this, that, and the other um, from people. I mean, from people, you know, there's a lot of this is, not in this case, but a lot of it's posthumous, uh, posthumously put out, which is cool. It's cool to, to get those little treasure troves of, of stuff from the past. A book I'm kind of excited about just to see what they're going to do with the character. Um, I've been loving the main series. But it is the mag. Sorry, uh, it is the magnificent Miss Marvel. It's the annual. It's the annual number one, um, written by Magdalene Visaggio, art by John Lamb, colors by Masak, and hey, Joe Caramanga, working hard doing them letters. I'm a big fan of mags. Big fans of Magdalene Visaggio. Like I said, I'm loving loving the main series of this. That that is really you know once G Willow Wilson left, we were kind of unsure what was going to go on with the title. Uh, but they put, they've got a really, really, really good writer on it right now who really seems to have a good grasp on the character. It's always hard for an adult to write a a young person. Um, you know, when you when you look at characters like that are being written by people like Bendis, they they try to give a younger voice, and it doesn't always follow through. But but it has on this one. Uh, and I'm stalling because I totally, y'all know I'm horrible with names, so uh, I can I can picture it. Saladin Ahmed. Uh, Saladin Ahmed is the one who is writing the main title, and he's doing a great job on it. If you're a fan of that, or maybe maybe you're looking for a good spot to jump on, they're not very deep into the series. I think they've had four issues come out. Check it out because it's, it's a great character, man, and can't wait to see what Mags does with it because I want more Mags. Um, you know, Eisner nominated... She's a, a powerful voice in the community and in the comics, so I can't wait to see what she's going to give us. Uh, over at this distinguished competition, the land of DC, uh, we are getting Adventures in Super Sons. Number 12, the end, the end of this run. Maybe the last time we'll we'll see the Super Sons uh, because, you know, they've aged. <laughs> Sorry, sinuses are crazy. Uh, they've aged John. Who knows what they're going to do with Damien. Uh, this book kind of takes place out of Continuity, in a sense, they're out in space doing all kinds of stuff. Um, we need to talk about how, I don't know if y'all can see that, how how T-H-I-C-C thick uh, older Robin is, because older Robin can get it. Uh, uh, anyway, so the, yeah, they're doing all kinds of weird stuff. There's an alien kid who's studied Lex Luthor and all the Batman rogues villains and taking all these alien children and said, hey, like let's let's be the space Legion of Doom. Um, of course, he betrays them all because he's a jackass. And they're going to do a lot of punching. They're going to punch him because they should. Let's see. James Tinian IV, uh, William II, Eastman, and Cowell. This is Batman TMNT crossover number three. I am enjoying this significantly less than I enjoyed the first two, but that's not, that's, that's not an indication of whether or not you should read it. Uh, I think you should. You love the turtles, and or if you love, uh, you know, bats. Um, Tinian and the Fourth is doing doing a great job, and like I said, Freddie too, man, can't go wrong with that work. I I got the I got the Eastman cover. I don't know if you guys saw that, but they they're doing two covers on that. Forget who's doing the other cover, but I, I got to go with Eastman, man. It's turtles. Eastman drawing turtles. I'm gonna I'm gonna get that. Uh, another variant cover that I picked up. And also another kind of little Elseworlds tale taking place out of continuity is Deceased by Tom Taylor, Trevor Hairsign, and Giordano on the colors. 
uh, and Barreto on the letters. I think you should get some credit on that because the letters in this look good. Um, have been following that. It was kind of pitched as Marvel Zombies, but it's not Marvel Zombies for DC. It's more like Crossed. Uh, they're not zombies. They've got a weird virus making everybody go crazy. Uh, as you can tell from the cover, this is, you know, Wonder Woman has got the deceased virus spread through Cyborg. Spoilers, if you hadn't read the first one, that's how it starts. But, uh, top the charts last month as far as the highest selling book by, by there was no margin. Uh, like, leaps and bounds above anything else. Nothing came close to it. So, it's a fun little story, man. Tom Taylor, if you read his Injustice stuff, you know he does a really great job with this kind of otherworldly, out of continuity DC stuff. Um, so I'm on the hype train for it. Possibly the best book being published at DC right now. Not the that selling book, just the best quality ride wise. Green Lantern number nine. Um, this is Grant Morrison and Liam Scharf. Uh continuing to just really bring a almost a Judge Dread 2000 AD take uh do the Green Lantern world. It's 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 peak Morrison. It's Morrison the right way. Um he is playing with the capabilities and the possibilities of the medium. Uh he's playing with some of the history of the characters. You just get gorgeous, gorgeous art. Like this is not a like I, I don't I don't know how else and you know, forgive the poor picture quality there. It doesn't do it justice, but hell, just go Google some images from this. It's outstanding. Uh, one of my favorite books on the shelf. And I'm not a Green Lantern dude. I think I've said that before. Um, I think this might be one of the first time I've ever bought Green Lantern, like, monthly. Uh, instead of just picking up the, the trades or reading collected editions. So that's that's saying something, man. And I'm definitely not a Morrison fan. I mean, you guys know that. If you've listened to the show, um, short of maybe All-Star Superman, which... You know, it's iconic. Um, it's on everybody's must read, but it's it's great. It's 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 peak peak Superman. Um, short of that, there's not a ton of Morrison superhero stuff that I love. So, yeah, man, Green Lantern number nine. If you're not on this book, stop, time out, go, run, run along, uh, and go go sign up for this book. Uh, another series that's coming to an end, uh, kind of, is the Wildstorm number twenty four. I say kind of because it's it's then moving to uh, I want to say Wildcats. They're getting their own book, so it's the, the from the very beginning when they launched this book, they said, "Hey, we're going to run this for two years, and then we're going to jump over to some other stuff." Um, and it is the genius mind of Warren Ellis, your uncle and mine, uh, one of the greatest creators working in comics, uh, actively working in comics. I mean, he's not Alan Moore, but Warren Ellis, and that's nothing to you know. It, I wish I was Warren Ellis. Do you, you wish you were Warren Ellis? I think that's fair. Um, the the key to this book, though, besides being Warren Ellis, is John Davis's hunt. John Davis hunts art, man. Uh, Warren Ellis does this thing where he just lets his artists tell tell a story. He trusts them, and his scripts are to the point that they can do that. And it's goddamn brilliant, man. Another thing I'm excited to check out. Uh, I don't know if I'll be on the title, but I at least want to to look at it is uh, Lois Lane number one. It is spinning out of, I think the gist I get is that it's something spinning out of the, what happened when when Wally released all the information to Lois that took place uh, in, I forget what it was called, the Sanctuary. Uh, Wally released all that information about what was really going on there to Lois. She's a journalist. They broadcast it. I think this is a little bit of, of that. So spinning out of spinning out of the mind of, of Mr. Tom King and, and written by by Greg Rucka. Uh you know, so this is nothing to to shy away from. It's Greg Rucka's a great writer, man. Um Paul Mount's doing the colors. Um Perkins Perkins on the pencils, and that's not a, necessarily a draw for me. Uh, he's not my favorite penciler. I've seen some of the other, like I've, I've read other books by him. He's fine. He he's fine. Um, 
But like I said, Greg Rucka. Check it out. Um, I picked up a trade paperback today, which is kind of exciting. And it's one that actually was suggested by Sean. Uh, no, was it? Might have been Matt on the on the last episode. And that is a copy of Joker uh, by Azarello and Bahermo. Um, this was printed before. Now it's being done in the black label uh, imprint, which you know seems to be what they're doing with everything. This is uh, how it was put to me. It's it's Lee Bahermo. Um, some of his some of his kind of first. Uh, it's when he first broke out. So if you just read Batman Damned. He's, you can see where he's building off of. This is this the go back in time, and you'll see kind of where he comes from. Um, he has he has the chops, but he hasn't refined them yet in this. And it's you know a hundred bullets as a reload, so you can't go wrong with that. Which, by the way, I'm actually fixing to like do a reread. I, fingers crossed. I'm going to get it all done before school starts. Uh, let's see here. Do you like wild, crazy warrior women? Because I do. Um, and you should too, and that's Red Sonia. Uh, this is Red Sonia number six, so it'll be like, like the last book in the trade dress. And if you haven't been following this book, it's kind of a, it's kind of how she gets her chops as a, as a warrior and as a leader. And it, it's great because this is unexpected Mark Russell. Uh, when I heard Mark Russell was writing this book, I was just like, oh, this is good. like, you know, it's Mark Russell. It's Flintstone's Mark Russell. Surely, uh, you know, writing a heavily strong feminist. He's very guarded with the way he's writing this book, and that's fine. Um, it's so much fun. It, it, it's, it's, it's peak Red Sonja. If you're a fan of her, and maybe you weren't going to get on this because maybe you've heard that, I don't know, Mark Russell has a political uh, slant to most of the that he does, and he does, to be fair, and typically I agree with it, but... I understand that maybe not, never, not everyone does, and that's fine. But it's also drawn by Mirko Kolak and Robert Carey, and that's, man, Mirko Kolak is the hotness. Uh, my book of the week, the book I suggest that everybody go pick up, Sea of Stars by Jason Aaron, Dennis Hallam, Stephen Green, and Rico Renzi. Uh, a father, a son, a whole lot of space between them. Uh, also Space Truckers, which <laughs> I'm not going to not go YouTube that song while I read that book. Over at the Dark Horses, we've got Black Hammer, Age of Doom, number 11, Jeff Lemire, Dean Ormston, Dave Stewart, Claude Klein. Uh, again, we're, we're keeping on, keeping on with, with Jeff Lemire's love letter to comics, love letter to the Golden Age, uh, this, this world he's built, which if you're confused because you're like, oh, there's a lot to this world, I don't know where to start, and like one, one they're in an island, and there's a barn, and Everybody's doing weird stuff. The next is different characters in the future, and what like if there's a Martian, and eh, there's so much stuff. There's a walkie-talkie thing all through it. I don't know where to start. Now you do. Now you know where to start, and you're going to start with Black Hammer Encyclopedia, and this kind of tells you everything you need to know about the characters, about the history, about the world, the universe, everything. And it's again Jeff Lemire, it's drawn by Tate uh, Bromdell. It's just. Own this. Own, own everything that, that Jeff Lemire is doing from Dark Horse with this Black Label stuff. Uh, another thing that's a little bit of housekeeping, again, came out last week, but I missed, is The Warlord of Mars Attacks. Jeff Parker, Dean Kotz, Ami Remolente, Hassan Otsman Eliahu. Uh, I think I said that right. If not, I deeply apologize. Uh, I love Pulp. I love Mars Attacks. I love John Carter. And I'm going to going to love the shit out of this book. And I want to pimp something real quick, because uh, I don't do the preview stuff anymore. Gail Simone writing Devil uh, from the Project Superpowers. You needs to be getting that. Needs to. Um, it's the hotness. You're going to love it, because I'm going to love it. We're going to talk about it. You're going to listen to the show. It's going to be a fun time. Last but certainly not least, maybe least, not a book I have a lot of faith in, Space Bandits number one, Mark Millar, which personally I could take or leave. Doesn't really matter. I, he's just pumping out stuff for Netflix right now. And that's fine. He's a money factory. Okay, that's great. But Mateo Scalera's drawing this, and that's the important part. That's the takeaway. That's what I bought this book for. It's for the Mateo Scalera art because it's gorgeous because Mateo's a beast. He's a machine. I love what he does. Uh, it, it's it's going to be good times, even if I don't necessarily like the story, which I very well may. Maybe I'm just being pessimistic. Um, 
who knows, but it's going to be fun to look at. So, all right, I've taken up enough of your time. You guys go forth. Be safe on the 4th of July. Love some comics. Listen to the podcast. Join the Facebook group. Look at my cute puppy. Um, and rock and roll. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.